and welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. This is Jorge Escobar, and I'm going to be talking about an interesting book that I uh, get the fortune to buy uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's called SQL Practice Problems from the author Sylvia Moest Basilek. I wonder if I didn't butcher that name right now. Never mind that. Um, as you may or may not know, I do work as a database administrator. That's my day job. I'm really happy at that job, uh, not just because it's something that I actually uh, take a lot of pleasure to do, but because it's something challenging. It's not something that uh, is easy for me. I do struggle to solve most of the problems I face day to day there, and I do learn a lot just by doing the job. Still, um, I find myself in a route in the sense that um, after solving a lot of uh, the same problems on the job uh, uh, over the days and over a couple of years now, I find myself uh, repeating the same solutions for the same problems over and over again, just with a little... Uh, just with a little difference here and there. But the thing is that um, I find myself a little bored in the sense that uh, the problems that I face, uh, even though they are hard to solve at the beginning, once I find the solution, uh, it becomes trivial to me. Well, uh, that's a good thing, actually, since I can give a lot of value to my company that way. So uh, I do have a Kindle. Uh, I'm using a Kindle Oasis. I do believe the device is a little bit expensive for what it is. Uh, but I really use it a lot. I actually use it uh, more often than not than my my Nintendo Switch. So i rather be reading a book than playing a video game in my hands right now. So the thing is, getting back to the book, uh, this book got my attention because... It's not one of those books that actually are trying to teach you something specifically for SQL databases. This book is actually a collection of challenges for people that they already know um, about SQL and they are looking for a challenge to solve. So, so the title... Uh, reads like uh, SQL practice problems and the subtitle reads 57 beginning, intermediate and advanced challenges for you to solve using uh, in quotes learn by doing end quotes approach so the title is all uh, what uh, it's telling you basically what you are going to be waiting for inside the book so there are no surprise. There are not surprises there, uh, or oh, that's what I thought. The thing is that the first thing that I tried to do was to actually uh, read how to use the book. So uh, this book assumes that I had some basic background knowledge about the relational databases. So this is not a. This is not really a book for people that is actually trying to learn SQL. Well, you can say that you that you could actually learn a lot by reading the book. I, I cannot deny that. But the thing is that this, uh, this is a challenge for someone that is already working with SQL, either by um, because you are uh, working, uh, because your day job requires it, or because uh, you are actually learned by yourself, or because uh, you are uh, a student databases and your school is, a is asking you to solve these problems. Either way, I did, um, I actually recorded my learning experience with the book, the, since the setup and the, and all the exercises. I actually do have a series, a video series on, on YouTube, uh, I'm going to link the playlist link in the description of the podcast, so you can actually watch the entire thing if you want. But basically, more than uh, a didactical video, 
<laughs> I will say that I did a struggle uh, solving the exercises, and my first my first wall wasn't the actual exercises themselves. My first wall was the actual setup, how to install uh, the database engine and the and the test database because the exercises um, require you to actually uh, use a database engine. In this case, is Microsoft SQL Server 2017 Express Edition. That's a loud mouth. <laughs> and the boot re uh, and the boot recommends that you use SQL Server Management Studio. Both are free. Microsoft products, and you can actually download them for free from the Microsoft website. The book uh, describes at the beginning the setup and is guiding you kind of on what you are supposed to be doing and where do you have to download the, the installer. Um, I was actually a little bit naive believing that it will be as easy as downloading the uh, the installation executables for both the database engine for Microsoft SQL Server and the SQL Server Man Management Studio. And the truth is that I spent a lot of time just trying to install uh, the database engine, in this case, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, Basically, I just downloaded the installer for the Microsoft SQL Server Express Edition, and I tried to double click on the installer and just click next, next, next. Uh, the truth is that that didn't work as expected. So if you watch the video on the, on the YouTube playlist, you can clearly see that I have absolutely no experience installing the actual uh, database management, uh, the database engine software. Even though I've been doing, um, the work of a database administrator for SQL Server from Microsoft for two years already. So I've been a database administrator with no experience of, of how to install the database engine itself. And I am afraid to say that I will bet that this is, uh, more often than not. This is the this is a common practice because oh, this happens often because basically if you get hired into a company most of the time you don't it's very rare that you get the opportunity uh, to get hired into a company and start the building of the database from ground zero most of the time companies are looking for experienced database administrators. Um, just to manage existing uh, databases. So this implies that it's not going to be your responsibility to install the database. The database already exists. You are just being hired to keep up with the uh, maintenance, um, with the maintenance uh, task, like backups, like restoring backups, uh, getting information, creating queries for, for, for for reports, etc. So the first wall I faced with the book was basically the setup of the uh, database engine. I was um, uh, I was trying to do a blind install. That that means that I didn't read anything uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, I I wasted a long uh, a lot of a long time trying to install it by myself. In the end, I just look for for an installation video on YouTube. I find uh, I found um, a really good guy to install the software, and it 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 wasn't it wasn't easy for me. And still, I do believe that even though I I don't have experience installing the software, I do believe that it shouldn't it should not be that hard to install. Uh, I will not need to be, I will not need to be watching a video of how to install the, the Microsoft SQL Server Express Edition. I mean, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm not, I'm not used to, uh, 
one of the problems I faced, for example, was that if, if I try to install Microsoft SQL Server, just as it is, the installer um, finds that I already have a .NET version installed. Uh, in my case, I do have the last update of the .NET uh, virtual machine executable. So I need to uninstall that, then install uh, SQL Server Express Edition, and the installer is going to include um, an old version of the .NET uh, installer. So after I install the Express Edition SQL Server, I need to update the .NET installer to the new one again. So I, I, I think... Uh, Maybe that's confusing, but the thing is, it's not, it's not as, I think it's a problem with, uh, how the software is packaged. So, I don't know. Maybe that could be fixed to be a streamlined or detective, uh, of the .NET version installed already is newer, but, but never mind that. Well, after the setup, I move on to the installation of Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, the SQL Server Management Studio. I didn't install that uh, because even though the installation of the tool is not hard at all, you just install it and and, and it should be working. Uh, the truth is that uh, uh, a couple of days before that, I already make a purchase for uh, a database man management software called DataGrip from the guys from JetBrains. Um, I tried the software for a, for a month and I was really convinced of the value of the software. So I paid for a year and, and I really like it. So I decided to use that instead of the recommended software uh, by the author. I guess that since the, uh, the management studio from Microsoft is actually free, uh, I would recommend that if you don't, if you don't have a tool, a pay tool that is, uh, just just install uh, Management Studio and you should be fine. Uh, after the initial video demonstrating the installation of the setup, the next day, or I think it was the same day, I don't remember really, I began with the introductory problems. So when I began the recording of the second video, that's the introductory problems for, from the book, I began creating a Git repository because in my job, in my day job, I do use it. I do use Git uh, a lot. Uh, even though I don't use GitHub or GitLab because, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just too lazy to do that. And I pretty much trust to just keep a local repository in my case and just use Git as it is. So I don't use a remote. Um, anyway, the thing is I created a, a Git repo and I keep updating that repo. Um, even though I began working as a local repository, I decided to publish in GitHub and in GitLab the, the, the same repository. So um, no matter what platform you use, uh, you can actually find the repository. I'm going to be linking the repository uh, the repository URLs for both GitLab and GitHub in the in the podcast um, description. Anyway, so the introductory problems begin with simple stuff like uh, the first problem was, I believe, a simple select statement, uh, a simple generic select all the fields from such table. So I do believe that the the author here try to get us going with a with a warm up problem at the beginning uh, she begins to level up the difficulty of every pro of every problem increasing um, a, li a little step every single every single problem for for onward so for example let me check out here quickly the first problem was which shippers do we have so in the during the installation of the management software of the database engine, uh, we also needed to install 
uh, a database which I did cover in the video too. So the the database is for um, a company that sells stuff. So basically, we do have a database to work on for these exercises for the entire book, and we do have um, data for those uh, for the table. So we don't need to be inserting uh, data anyway. So the first problem was a simple select. We have a table called shippers, and we need to return all the fields from all the shippers. So basically, we do here uh, we do get a hint with the actual answer or almost the answer. So basically, we just need to make um, a simple select statement. And this is just the first problem. From here onward, the introductory problems begin escalating in difficulty, a little bit at a time, so you don't really realize it until you get to the almost the end of the introductory problem section. So the next exercise requires you to to return just just uh, not all the fields but just uh, but just certain fields uh, from from another for a, from a different table and um, the next problem you're required to filter something and so on so most of the per most of the people or most of the database administrators um, need to work a lot with select statements so this is basically uh, the introductory problems represent what 80% of the of the queries that do. most of the time we are required to do in in a day job. So, so letter statements they are the bread and butter for any database administrator, I believe, because most of the time it's not really required that you update data or even modify tables or the structure of the table. Most of the time. Um, uh, the managers or the boss is going to ask you for some information. So most of the time you're going to be find yourself doing select statements. So there we go. Introductory problems. Focus on this idea of getting out of the way the fact that you are going to be required to extract information from the database. So... The introductory problems, um, they are composed of 19 exercises. Let me check. I believe that the last two exercises begin with the idea of doing a join clause. And I do have to admit that join clauses um, are one of the... We, we may consider those the beginning of the actual intermediate problems because... Uh, not many people are used to build their databases, considering relational um, relations between tables. And that is that means that if I do create a table that is called, for example, products, and I do in and if I do create another table called supplier, uh, I do know that in the real world those two entities hold a relationship between them. In this case, that a supplier is going to supply me, my company, with such product or a list of products. So I may be interested in what suppliers are supplying my company with the products I, I intend to sell. So what do I do? Uh, I do create a supplier table with the list of suppliers and I do create a separate table called products. And in those pro, in, in that other, in the secondary table products, I'm going to be creating rows for every single product I've been supplied to. Uh, the special thing about relationships is that in the sub, in this case, in the products table, I'm going to have one field that is going to be defined as a foreign key. And a foreign key is basically a value that is going to be the same on the supplier's table as well as the product's table. That value key is going to be used to create the relationship from the supplier and the product. So this means that I'm going to have, let's say, one supplier on my supplier table and, a and 10 products that belong to that supplier. 
So in my, in my product stable, I'm going to have a field called supplier ID, for example, and that field is going to contain the value of the supplier that belongs in the supplier table. That may sound a little confusing and it's, and it's really hard to explain it uh, just using audio. Uh, but let's move on anyway. Join clauses, the purpose of join clauses is to use that information stored in separate tables. Join clauses are pretty much used for when you are going to select information from two or more tables. So a join clause is going to be a very sophisticated clause in your queries. You really need to get the hang of join clauses uh, to be just com a competent database administrator. And I find myself struggling with the join clauses still today, even though I, I've been having like 10 years of experience uh, working with databases. The truth is that once I create a view in a, inside a database, and a view is basically, uh, if I already know that I'm going to be using uh, a query uh, more often than not, I may prefer to create a view and a view is basically saving that query for fu for future use. So instead of typing down the query as it is, as, as it should be, I may just say create a view with, and I type then the query. And now I do have access to that query inside the database engine anytime I want. And I, and I just can refer to that query as if it was uh, a table because the view is going to have a name. So even though the, the view is not a table in itself, I can basically create, for example, uh, a query using a join or several join clauses, and then encapsulate all that inside a view, and then just call the view as if it was a table. It doesn't have the same uh, properties as a table, but it's really, it's really useful in case that you just uh, work a lot building your query and you just don't want to have uh, to write it again or to find the file with the query, uh, uh, with the query uh, text. Uh, now, just save it inside the view and you can actually check it out. But never mind that. <laughs> I'm moving along. Um, let's get back to the John clause. So at the end of the introductory problems, you are beginning to watch the concept of the join clauses and why uh, and where the power of relations, uh, of table relationships r reside on. So basically, you begin playing with the idea of joining two tables in a single query. And after those, uh, after, after the last problems from the introductory problems, we obviously ma uh, managed to move on to the intermediate problems. And here is where I uh, personally, I began to, to lower the speed which I was solving these problems. So at the end of the recordings, I was actually, I was actually realizing that I was taking way too much time solving the intermediate problems. And these problems, are not easy to solve. The introductory problems, I I didn't really have to think uh, too much about them. I could basically just uh, just uh, solve them in because on, on the on the front of my of my mind, I was able to just solve the problem then and there. So they were they were not hard at all. The intermediate problems required me to actually think. So I need to actually stop and and read the statement, read the definition of the problem, understand the problem, and then think of a solution. So uh, we begin with the problem number 20, categories and the total products in each category. And here, the problem was for this problem, we, we like to see the total number of products in each category. Sort the results by the total number of products in descending order. So here we begin with the idea of grouping. 
Y this uh, group, the group clause, is often used when you need to use something called aggregate functions. And aggregate functions are one of the most useful tools in databases because they allow us to generate data that is not directly recorded inside the database. This is, for example, if I do have uh, several categories for my products, in this case, condiments, seafood, dairy products, grains, cereals, meat, poultry, etc. So I may have all these products and each product may have one of these categories. I may like to know, for example, how many products do I have for each category? And this information is not actually recorded inside a table. I don't have a table called uh, categories where I actually store this value. Uh, I may not like to do that because one, as this, um, as I just create a new product on the database, I may like to update that value. And if that value is actually uh, a static value inside a, a field, inside a table, I may need to remember to update that value every time. Uh, however, if I do, if I do solve this problem using the, that, the data that I already have, and I use the, the join clause with the accrued by clause and the aggregate function count, I may get this information without myself needing to store this information somewhere else. So I'm reducing the amount of data that I need to store by calculating this information. So basically, I do have this information recorded already on my database in an indirect way. So it's not explicit. So as we move on on these problems, every single problem is becoming harder and harder. Combining join with counts and also beginning to uh, with the idea of grouping levels. This means that, for example, the next problem is total customers per country and city. In the customers table, I need to show the total number of customers per country and city. So in this case, I may say, let's not, let's just see how many clients do I have in the United States. And that's just perfectly fine. However, my admin, my manager may like to know, well, uh, it may be more useful if we know also in which cities do we have these clients. So we, no, we not only need to group by the country, we may need to group by the city too. So in this specific case, we have the country Brazil, which has two cities, Sao Paulo with four clients and Rio de Janeiro with three clients. So here we begin uh, with the idea of grouping levels, where you don't necessarily need to show uh, the outer the the outer grouping. In this case, the country, you may need to be more es specific and more detailed in your information. In this case, I may like to know what cities in those countries do have clients and how many. So we begin by leveling up the difficulty. And every single uh, of these problems are challenging me more and more. These are actual challenges that need to be um, overcome. So I begin to feel uh, within my mind that these problems are not something that I was used to be encountering. They seem to be pretty easy to understand, maybe for a teacher that he is actually being paid and he actually... Uh, is, uh, let's say, is forced to face uh, these problems. Because most of the time, in a regular day-to-day -day job, you may not even need to face these things. Uh, you probably, you, you may be solving other, other kinds of problems within that, with databases. So, some some of these problems I wasn't uh, used to solve. 
in my day-to-day -day job. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's, it's kind of refreshing to yet to be challenged, at least academically, by a book. Um, and, you know, and exercise your mind solving these problems. And as I was moving on, uh, from the intermediate problems, I begin myself uh, struggling to comprehend uh, what was actually required of me. Because uh, every single problem, almost, almost every, every single problem, uh, besides the, uh, the structure of the problems on the book, uh, is, is this. You get the title of the problem. You get a description of the problem in a single paragraph or maybe two. And right after that, most of the time, you are going to be uh, reading a expected result section for the problem, for every problem. So basically, the expected result section shows you uh, a table most of the time um, or, or the result set that you are expected to, to deliver with the actual right values. So you can actually know you are doing things right or wrong. So after that, there is a hint section for most of the problems. The hint section contains, uh, obviously, a hint of, of what the author is expecting from you. So she basically is helping you out and telling you basically, you know what, you just need to, uh, to get this specific thing done. And she's even showing you some code in, most, in, in some cases. Um, basically, that's all you need to solve the problem at hand. Some of the hints get more elaborate, especially on the advanced problems, because the advanced problems are very sophisticated and the amount of code is, is quite large there. So moving on the intermediate problems, we find uh, that the challenges move on, not just in difficulty, but however, th uh, they also introduce new ideas. Uh, for example, how to sort uh, a table when you have null values and how to replace null values with something that you can actually use um, uh, like regular values. In my case, I was um, exposed to the idea to replacing the null values with an actual value using the case clause. And that was very fun, and I actually use that from, from now on on my job. Uh, that's a really good hint. So basically, you, you are facing new ideas and uh, new ways to solve things. Most of the time, uh, database administrators learn how to deal with problems uh, with a very short or limited... Um, you, you basically develop a very small tool set. Most of the time, because you find yourself with the hammer and basically everything can be solved using the hammer. Most of the time. Uh, sometimes the problem is that when you face sophisticated problems, uh, you find yourself in the need of something else besides the hammer. Uh, you may try to solve your problem using just the hammer. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I have done that. And I can say from experience that these are, uh, you may actually solve your problem, but the truth is that it's going to be a very messy process. I don't really recommend it. Learn to use other tools. It's really useful. So at the, at midway from introductory problems, I find myself spending even more time solving the problems. So I begin doubting myself because uh, I'm supposed to have 11 years or 10 years of experience dealing with databases, and I find myself struggling with intermediate problems, and they are not even the hardest one. So at the end of the intermediate problems, I begin to think to myself, I should really be uh, learning more about databases and more about uh, relationships between tables, and aggregate functions, grouping, uh, how join actually works. Because there are, um, if you are a student from a book, it's very easy to believe that you are already uh, dominating a subject. Uh, but the truth is that if you are not, if you are not testing out what you just learned, you may not actually learn what you're reading. 
In this case, I was actually solving the problems and I actually recorded myself solving them. So I was realizing a lot of those things that are not explicit on the book. So finishing the intermediate problems, I get to the realization that I need more training on databases. So when I face the advanced problems, uh, here is where I actually um, pushing myself to the limit, let's call it like that. The last uh, section, the advanced problems, uh, I did record those two. I do remember that I did that video a Sunday, a morning, and I actually finished at the um, uh, that same Sunday in the afternoon. I spent it close to almost six hours uh, non-stop solving these problems. I did record it myself, so uh, so you can actually see me struggle. Uh, but the truth is that I learn a lot more on the advanced problems that I've been learning on the on the rest of the book, because the advanced problems uh, are showing me new ideas and new ways of thinking about databases. Most of the time, when I'm trying to solve a sophisticated problem on databases, I use two uh, two really useful tools. The first one is the use of variables. In Transact SQL, that is the language, uh, the SQL language for SQL Server from Microsoft. In Transact SQL, you can declare variables and you can store values in those variables. So I use that as a crutch most of the time. Mm, and I actually solve one of the problems using variables because I was just stuck. So I was stuck. Um, I didn't know what to do, so I fall back to the old way of thinking for me. In in this case was, uh, you know what? I don't know how the author uh, is requiring me to solve this problem. Uh, I am confused. I am frustrated. I'm going to solve this uh, using my crutch of the variables. So I created variables and I was able to solve the problem easily that way. However, I got the feeling that moment that the, that, that wasn't the way that the author expect me to solve the problem. So I forced myself out of my comfort zone in that moment. And I promised to myself that I would, I was going to solve these problems, uh, as that, as th they were meant to be solved. So, uh, I believe that that was the thing that made me spend too much time solving these problems. So we facing, uh, the first problem in the advanced section is the problem number 32, high value customers. And it reads, we want to send all of our high value customers a special VIP gift. We are defining high value customers as those who had made at least one order with a total value, not including the discount, equal to $10,000 or more. We only want to consider orders made in the year 2016. So this is the sentence defining the problem. As you can see, this is supposed to be the warm up problem of the advanced section. And I did a struggle to solve this. So we get uh, in the advanced section, we get the elaborated hints. So basically you can study the hints or go directly to your solution. But I recommend that if you are struggling with this problem, just as I, just as I do, or I did, I do recommend you to just read the hint, understand the hint, and then try to propose a solution. So in this case, uh, in the second hint, I did get um, a query, which the author say it reads like this. You should have something like this. And right after that, I do get a query. So I basically copy and paste that query and begin working from there. So I do believe that the idea of the author is that the student should not be stuck on the, on building the starting point. 
So, if you are struggling to get to this point, just copy and paste the hint and work into getting the idea that the author wants you to acquire solving this problem. Because you can easily spend an hour trying to get to the starting point. So why bother wasting that time? Just copy and paste it and under read it, read the, the hint and understand the query. You are going to get more value from that. So basically, she's going to be walking you through the hands and your mind is going to begin connecting the dots on the hands and your brain is going to begin uh, solving the rest of the work. So the, the advanced problems has, uh, all of them had this, uh, had this property. They are going to begin with, uh, with a statement in one single paragraph. And they are going to be telling you the problem, the nature of the problem. And most of the time, the next problem is going to build up from the previous one. So this is where we are getting sophisticated queries then. You need to read the previous exercise or remember it to, to solve the next one. So we are beginning with the idea that the previous exercise is going to be the base for the next one and the next one and so on. So basically I struggled to solve these problems and some in some point here on, on the advanced problem section, I got to the idea of CRT, I believe are called. The, I don't remember how they are called. CTEs. Uh, I don't remember what CTEs mean. Let me check really quickly now. Uh, CTEs in Transat SQL mean common table expressions. So I didn't know this existed before reading the book. So when I first encountered them on the exercises, uh, I actually didn't get it at the beginning. I do have, I did have to read some documentation to get the hang of them. But basically, you can actually create um, a suit query. It's pretty much like a, like an inline view in the sense that you create a suit query between parentheses, you assign them a name, and you can actually use that uh, suit query with, with using the name inside another query. So inside this problem, why would you use that instead of a view? Well, first is that they don't actually create a database object. They don't create a view inside the database. So basically, they just exist for the runtime of your query. So you don't need to um, to keep creating views just to solve these exercises. So they are basically temporary views. So you create these CTEs, these common table, uh, how are they called? Common table expressions. And you use them to solve mo uh, complex problems in the future. So basically, these inline views allow you to help yourself uh, creating joins with these views. So in case that you need to do sophisticated things that you knew that you could solve if you just have another table to join from, you can actually use a CTE and solve your problem there without the need to create a new uh, database object. So CTEs are a very flexible tool. I'm beginning to uh, find myself using them in my job. Uh, I did use them to solve one problem in my job. And, and I do believe that they need to be studied. Um, they, I, I need to study them uh, deeply, I will say. So they are really useful. And... If I did learn something in the book that is really useful, I would say that CTEs are that thing. So the value, the cost of the book uh, is, is, is more than fair just for that. So I do recommend the book. So, okay. So basically the CTEs are used from, from the middle set, from the middle from, of the advanced problems forward, I do believe. And they are a prime, um, uh, a prime clause to be used on, on the problem because they are a bit, they are really that, that resourceful and flexible, I will say. 
So basically, this book demands that you actually think, and to and and this is one of those books that demand me to get out of my comfort zone, because uh, if I wanted, I could avoid learning about CTEs and just create functions and stored procedures to create uh, the same results. However, I do understand that create that creating more database objects may be, um, may blow the database itself. And especially if I'm not going to be using those, uh, stored procedures, uh, in somewhere else just because to solve one specific problem. So I don't know. So CTEs may be, um, basically, a quick way to generate those objects without bloating the database. So I learned CTEs, uh, I, those common table expressions. I do need to study them deeply, to study them more, uh, but I believe they are worth it. So the, the boot continues uh, um, with increasing difficulty in every single problem. Uh, they are really challenging. I spent six hours trying to solve the last section, and you can find the uh, the GitHub and the GitLab repository on the links. On th the links are going to be in the description. And well, that's pretty much it. I, I would say that this book was really uh, was really challenging. Uh, I have a lot of fun solving them, a lot of frustration. Uh, and I face my, uh, in the first time in a, in a long time, I face, uh, a lot of challenges that I could not solve in less than five seconds in my mind. And I really like that. It was a good invitation to leave my comfort zone, at least in my database, um, uh, experience, I think. So that's all I have to say about the book. It's been really fun. I going, I'm going to be uh, producing this podcast often. I'm going to try to make this a daily one because basically just uh, plugging on the microphone and just talk about uh, this thing. As you can see, this is not a scripted and I'm going to be doing this um, tomorrow, I think. So thank you for coming and I hope you have enjoyed this. I've been rambling for almost 15 min 50 minutes already. So you stay to the end. Uh, thank you for coming and see you next time.